is where fearsome monsters of the deeper dark come up into the city from. So Imberlar mounts an official guard over the bridges. Imberlur. This Ilistri worshipping drow city under the border kingdoms is sometimes referred to as the Pit of Doom by borderers who think of it, in the words of a carter based in Kolovaran, Height Isker Thamaran, as a deep place from which an invasion that will someday doom the entire border kingdoms will erupt. However, the truth is very different. Far from being any sort of military powerhouse, Imberler can just about defend itself and is far more about creating music and poetry and new useful everyday devices than it is about invading or conquering anyone or anywhere. The citizens of Imberler, known as Imberlar, venerate Ilistri above all other deities and pursue the goals of happiness through creativity and shared fun, playing board games and acting or party games and crafting things together and shared resources. They share food and dine with each other freely rather than one family making and eating meals for themselves. Neighbors and even strangers are welcome at the table and an Imberlar away from the family dwelling will eat and drink at any nearby meal where there's room and food and drink enough. Imberlar also share carts and work lizards, large placid lizards that have shallow walled carry platforms and cages strapped to their backs with each other. Viewing them as common resources everyone should care for and use only as long as they have pressing need. Imberlar come to the surface often by means of dozens of caverns connecting to the surface, notably at both ends of the Neth Peaks. In the Neth Stand, just north of Ranrith Run, due north of Yurbrithri, in a certain cellar in Yalash, just north and east of the headwaters of the River Rith in Nether Mukshar, in the coastal mountain caverns east of Arthen, and in the western side of the central Crumble Rock Crags west of Earl to worship the dark dancer by dancing in the moonlight in forest groves and on certain hilltops. One such hill, Stony Top, in Nether Mukshar, it's right under the E in the map tag for Nether Mukshar in Mike Schley's superb map of the Border Kingdoms, is known to be a place where the goddess herself has danced from time to time and so is favored by Imberlar as a site to work magical rituals that involve precise dancing and many participants. They most often do such workings when they desire direct guidance from the goddess, but also to give thanks for abundant fungi harvests and the acquiring of new trade contacts. If you're enjoying this video, please leave me a like or subscribe. If you want to see other videos, in the future, please hit the bell icon. And if you want a steady stream of Realms Lore, please jaunt out to my Patreon, Ed Greenwood on Patreon, and consider becoming a protector of the realms. The city that meets the eye. Imberlur is a labyrinth of linked caverns in the shallow upper dark, directly under the surface hills ringed by Ornril, Boldos Vale, Dunbridges, Maresto, and Nightwind. They are ideal for habitation because they host abundant phosphorescent edible fungi and streams that well up from deeper layers of the Underdark, cleansed by the fungi they pass through to be sweet, clear drinking water. The general layout of the city looks like a string of pearls curving, bowed out to the southwest, from the northwest down to the southeast, then running east in a wiggling line. The largest cavern of all, known as Larthrilvas, Larthril's home, is the northernmost at the head of the string, and the next three largest caverns, north to south, Omvuth, Harmervuth, and Onsvuth, lie along the southwesternmost arc of the string. Larthrilvas is a big communal market and eating place, shared chairs and tables for talking, eating, and dining, surrounded by many habitations, small caverns hollowed out of scores of wall crevices all around the cavern. Omvuth is dominated by bakeries and shops and the 
homes of those who staff them. Harmeruvuth is where the Imberler's governance happens, in the form of many meeting chambers that are also used by merchants for daily negotiations that surround a large assembly cavern. Onsvuth is the noisiest place in the city, as it's the hub cavern for most of the larger city workshops where carts are made and repaired, fungi are processed into food and lubricant oils, mongery is forged or cast and then finished, and personal adornments and housewares are made. Small workshops tend to be part of the cavern homes of Imberlar, which surround all of these large caverns. The four caverns immediately southeast of Onsvuth along the string, Bulvuth, Laralvuth, Zarundavuth, and Kajalruth, and all along the easternmost winding run of the city beyond that to the small end cavern of Restarvuth. Onsvuth is separated from Bulvuth by the Veragath, a deep chasm that plunges for hundreds of feet deeper into the Underdark, and this Veragoth, crossed by three natural stone bridges, is where fearsome monsters of the deeper dark come up into the city from. So Imberlar mounts an official guard over the bridges. Imberlur is softly lit by the pale green, yellow orange, and reddish glows of the fungi that coat most of its walls, which are either Kuthmar, colonies or clusters of jelly-like domes, each dome stuck to adjacent ones from which it budded when they swelled too large and burst their walls, or Aramra, which are feather frond-like vines of purple and green that don't glow, but put their energies into growing far and fast along stone and kuthmar domes alike, and often grow tendrils down into the nearest water source to draw in the moisture they need. Their feeding keeps the streams from running throughout the city from ever becoming more than pools along the flow. Wherever these fungi grow, the air smells like limes or gooseberries and is humid thanks to the emanations of the fungi, which also deadens sound. So the worst activity din of the hammerings of making things and the singing almost all Imberlar indulge in as they work is softened to the ear. This is useful, as Imberlar don't mark hours and lack a common sleep-wake cycle. City traders are well aware that borderers on the surface above do ring hour bells in their cities and mark the passage of days by sunlight or the lack of it, and those who go up report the passing days to city elders in Harmervath upon their returns. Imberlar tend to be calm, patient, efficient workers, seldom scurrying or in any excited hurry, but the centers of all city caverns tend to see constant traffic at all times, and it's city courtesy not to block the passage of others. Those who meet and strike up longer than fleeting converse will, out of habit, draw aside out of the most traveled routes across caverns. There's little privacy in Imberlar homes, Doors are rare, and locked doors even rarer. Curtains hung across door openings are the rule, and a tended cluster of bright fungi over a cave mouth denotes a front entrance. If for some reason real privacy is wanted, a table will be temporarily put on end to serve as a screen or door barrier, stones put atop its down legs for stability. Many homes have the layout of an entry or common room cavern that opens into a dining, cooking, and larder cavern, and that has arms of sleep niches or side caverns sprouting off of it. Imberlar, life. Imberlar love dressing up and body adornments, but usually dance naked to venerate a listry and may work naked to save damage to garments or wearing whatever's practical for work protection. In keeping with their communal sharing and relative lack of privacy, they place little value on stockpiling things, coinage included. One exception is remembrances. Keepsakes of unusual journeys, usually to surface locales, but more rarely to deep dark places, which may be valuable or mere oddities. Most Imberlar want to acquire experiences they enjoy and memories of these, and to become skilled at something they enjoy doing. They tend to delight in achieving innovations in design, looks and shapes of useful things, and in art, 
sculpture, and lifelike paintings. A typical Imberlar portrait is a strikingly good likeness. As a community, they want to flourish doing their own things and living their own lives with friendly relationships with borderers so they can trade and travel freely and without encountering hostility. Though they well understand that many folk hate and fear drow, for that reason, Imberlar drives spiders out of their city and don't use arachnid images or sculptures. They don't want to war with anyone, nor to expand or conquer, but are ready to fight any aggression against them, withdrawing from surface trouble, but not retreating from underdark foes. To an Imberlar, success is living a good life, being remembered well, and creating something new and lasting, however small and modest. One Imberlar merchant is swellingly proud of a distant ancestor who developed a comfortable shape for hand grips of everyday kitchen tools. Trade. Imberlar trade almost exclusive with borderlands above them, not with anyone else in the Underdark. They send frequent pairs of armed patrols, one trailing another, to rush in as reinforcements and to send warnings back to the city, out in a wide circuit around the city, and keep watch for monsters from the deeper dark emerging from the Varagas. But otherwise, have little to do with the realms below. Imberlar sell or barter spellbones for surface textiles, lumber, fruit, vegetables, sharp flavored cheeses, sweet cordials and liqueurs, and fine footwear, tall boots in particular. It is this that makes them notable to wider Faroon. They are the chief source of spellbones in the realms. Spellbones. Imberlar make and sell to surface folk human finger sized, translucent gray white, clay hued, undyed, porcelain, two to three inch long batons they call dara, but everyone else calls spellbones that they sell in small, one bone wooden boxes to prevent unintended breakages. When someone holding a spellbone breaks it, the spell that was cast into it when it was made is unleashed under the control of the spellbone breaker. So it's akin to a spell scroll any being can use without having the gift or casting a spell or even needing to read. If you don't know what a particular spellbone does, you're surprising yourself and others with what magic you awaken. Purchased spellbones typically have an identifying sentence written on the inside of their box. Veteran adventurers carrying several spellbones often substitute a long bone from the leg of an ox or draft horse for the spellbone box, plugging the ends with whittled wooden or cork stoppers and filling the hollow heart of the bone with spellbones individually wrapped in scraps of cloth. The most popular, that is frequently made and sold, Imberler spellbone spells are Bless, Cure Wounds, Featherfall, Magic Missile, and Mending. It's rare indeed to find a spell of above fifth level, arcane or divine, waiting within a spellbone, but Elminster tells me there's no theoretical upper power limit to spellbone storage. And there you have it, Imberler, its folk, its city, and what they do. Hi, welcome back to Realm Speak. And this time around, we're doing this. And this is Veron. Veron. Usually to pronounce just Veron. And Veron is a deity of the drow. A male deity of the drow. The um brother of Ilistri. And for a time. Uh, when he was being brought back, he was within Ilistri. Ilistri carried his his uh, divine essence and ethos. So, Veron, um, god of thievery, another, um, well, other things too. But I mean, he was a, a drow god active on the surface world like Ilistri. So, you know, if you were bad and wanted to keep to the shadows, you might worship Veron and ask for his aid when you were doing dark shadowy deeds. I do dark shadowy deeds every Monday.